and happy new year, Payne County. Woo! It's 2022. Pistol firing. And as somebody said to me recently, I'm still trying to process 2020. <laughs> but here we are. <laughs> Here we are. I'm still trying to process 2020. Um, I wanna. So we. So obviously it is. It's still the Christmas season. So Ooh. Merry Christmas. It is now. Uh, it's not the liturgical New Year because that started in Advent. It's the civil New Year, 2022. Uh, and it is also, ladies and gentlemen, Whoa. boys and girls. Oh, oh. We're gonna talk about the solemnity of the Epiphany. Uh, but it's also Father Carey's birthday. It is! January 2nd. January 2nd is Father Carey's birthday. <sighs> he enjoys gift cards, uh, booze. <laughs> Uh, rounds of golf. Rounds of golf. Uh, intercessory prayer for me. Donations to his building project. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and lots of prayers. Yeah, lots of and, prayers. and intercessory prayer. Oh, it's offer mass for me someplace <laughs> around all. the world. Hey, that's you all people he, in Indian Sweden, that's all he wants. pray for me. That's it. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. How old I, are you? How old are you? I am a uh, ripe age of 46. We're now the same age again. Congratulations. Yeah. I was... I, I was High older fives. than him for uh, about, I don't know, 30 days or November so. November 22. Yeah. The Feast of John Paul II. 40, 40 days. <laughs> it's a little Lent of being older than you, and now we're, and now we're back. Okay. So you know now who else back. is? Guess who else's birthday? January 2nd. Uh, okay, you ready? It's, it's a saint. It's a saint. So I know it's um, January 2nd is usually the Feast of... Basil the Great Gregory uh, Nazianza. Yeah, Gregory Nazianza. Okay. But whose birthday? Who do I celebrate my birthday with? I mean, there's lots of people out there, but there's one famous person, and it is a woman. Okay, so it's a saint. January 2nd. Elizabeth Ann Seton? Nope, nope. Catherine Drexel? Nope. It, Mother Teresa? Okay, are you ready? And as a doctor of the church? Therese. Of? Therese of Lisieux? The Therese of the Child, Jesus oh, of the Holy Face. Oh, you have the same face. birthday. Her and I have the same birthday. Wow. I was in Alon How old is she? Uh, she's she's deceased, but she she's she died she's at like zero. 24, I think, right? She's zero in heaven. Oh. You don't have birthdays in heaven, Father. They don't? Ryan. No. You have your heavenly birthday the day. But Wouldn't you celebrate your baptism day in heaven? Mm. Mine's April 18th. What's Can yours? we speculate on that? Uh, I was baptized December 21st. What? It was, it was just last week. Yep. Wow. Nine I pounds, was 30 six. days old. No, I weighed 10 pounds, 10 ounces when, when you were I was born? born. Yeah. Uh, nine pounds, six ounces. You were not. I was. Really? My, my mother was like, you were a heavy baby. Nine pounds, six ounces. Well, I was 10 pounds. That's why I would so say nine pounds, six ounces, little baby Jesus. Take that. Wow. Okay. So Every time I say that to like moms, well, mm-hmm. uh, oh, you have, you know, we have babies, all the, new babies all the time. It's great. And I'll say... Hey, there's Kyle Dowd. Come in, Kyle Dowd. Oh, my gosh. Kyle Where Dowd did... is here. <laughs> in the studio. Hey, Kyle Dowd. Live and in person. Go get a, uh, go get a chair. Oh, all right. Wait, wait. This, wow. This, this, Seminarian th- Kyle Dowd of the Diocese of Tulsa. This radio show and podcast just took a right hand turn. This is wacky. <laughs> uh, Kyle Dowd. Uh, Kyle Dowd is... Kyle Dowd, <laughs> Kyle Dowd is in the house. Wow. Okay, exciting. We're gonna oh. share. We're gonna share this microphone. Oh, we're okay. gonna share that. Microphone. Yeah, we're gonna share this one. It's a okay. little crowded. Yeah, in I don't like to share. Yeah. Okay, so my birthday is the same birthday as Trezor Lizu, Doctor of the Church, and she has been super involved she's in my priesthood. Yeah, and, and especially as a seminarian. And she's I, the patron saint of missionaries, even though she was a cloistered nun. Mm-hmm. She wanted to be like. I think I found like a friendship with her because it was a, a time when she was like she had all these pious things. She's there like, was a want- time when you had no friends. Uh, that's right. Which was now. <laughs> yeah, there, was, there was a time when you wanted to be a cloistered nun, and your parents said no. <laughs> no. That's a, thank you, Kyle. <laughs> Boys can't be cloistered nuns, Father. I have a girl's name. <laughs> oh, you tried to get in with your girl's <laughs> name. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> you just applied on paper hoping they wouldn't. <laughs> you applied because you wanted the name change. That's hoping, right. Hoping that they, they wouldn't interview you or ask for a picture. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. So Teresa Blazou, she wanted to be a nun and a priest and a bishop and a missionary. And she wanted to be like, like, like everything, like everything, all like, things to all people. Like she wanted to be a preacher and a teacher and a catechist. Like St. Paul is like, there are some that are. Uh, preachers and missionaries and catechists and what, what, and so I had like 
all these things that I wanted to do. Uh, and I felt like I was reading out of Trezele Zoo. There was all these things that she wanted to do. And God said, I want you to just be a cloistered nun. And unlike Kyle Dowd's comments previously, I did not want to be a cloistered nun. And remember when you became Catholic in college? I wish, I'm going to take that back. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't think you can. I think, I think there's something called an indelible mark that you can't take away. Oh, oh, really? Oh. Precisely for things like this. <laughs> precisely in moments of rage of another person. <laughs> Well, it is um, it is the great uh, the great solemnity of the Epiphany as we're celebrating. Is that right? We're celebrating the Epiphany early, uh, earlier than usual, January second. Yeah, isn't the Epiphany like supposed to be on like the sixth? The sixth, but we move it to a Sunday. Why didn't we move it to the next Sunday, which would have been like the ninth? Uh, that's above my. Is the ninth out of the grade. Christmas season? Oh, January 9th is yeah, because Jordan and Adam are getting married on Friday the seventh. Which uh, Adam Ross and Jordan, Miss Jordan Stavro, they're getting married on the seventh, and then Saturday the eighth, and then Sunday the ninth, and then the tenth. School starts again around here, <gasps> and we start up masses again that weekend. I better get my stuff together in life. Wow. Whoa. Okay. 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 Whoa. Exciting. Whoa. Whoa. So uh, we were talking. Uh, Kyle is uh, Kyle is here in town uh, visiting us. Yes. Uh, home uh, from. Uh, seminary. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kyle, uh, this is, we are his home parish, St. Francis Xavier, uh, which is awesome. Uh, Kyle, just give us, uh, give us the uh, 30 second, where are you now and what, like where in seminary, like, like basically everyone just wants to know like when you're going to be a priest. Let's go. Right. Yeah. Um, so that question, I'll be a priest, God willing, in three years. Uh, so I'm, I'm free then. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Okay. I'll I'll keep you, I'll keep you posted. Yeah. Keep me posted. Um, Yeah, basically, I'm in the first year of kind of a master's of theology program, uh, which everybody has to go through. Um, Dig it. Before you be a priest. And then I just completed two years of the philosophy program, which is another thing you have to do uh, before you become a priest. You want to know some philosophy before you know some theology. Um, so, yeah, it's a three year three years left to go of both studying and um, kind of some human formation. Growing in holiness. Yeah, also that. Yeah, forgot. Yeah, praying, I think, is in there somewhere, right, Father Kerry? Always. It, it ought to be. <laughs> ought, yes. Ought yes. to be. Um, and, yeah, so I'm studying up. I'm, I, I'm in school in St. Louis, but I'm studying for the Diocese of Tulsa. Heck, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'll come back, God willing, and be a priest somewhere in this area. So that would be 2025? Probably. I okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, we don't, yeah, we don't, you know. I haven't started. We're not planning anything. Yet, yeah, yeah but. we're not. Okay, that's great. That's great. What a gift. What a if, gift. If Kyle has such a mellow tone to him. Oh, I'm watching gosh. the frequency <laughs> modulations on the screen over here. Yours, yours are just like spiking through the roof. Right? Uh, exactly. Yeah. Yours are like this mellow little tone. It looks like someone's heartbeat, you know, when they're... And then, and then mine are these erratic behaviors that go up and down. Okay, uh... You when, you when did you become Catholic? Come here, Kyle. I became Catholic in 2015. Okay, 2015. Now, yeah. did you... You were Scotch Irish Amish? What? No, 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 no. That's, that's Mennonite. Not, that's not a Protestant denomination. I'm sorry. <laughs> Mennonite, right? Uh, yeah, sort of Baptist, Mennonite, Presbyterian, somewhere in that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and what did you think about like the Christmas season? When did it begin and when oh, did it end? Oh, good. Okay, I like this. Good I like. Transition. I like. I'm picking up what you're Man. putting down. Uh-huh. Can we just appreciate what ADHD does for people? This is great. <laughs> Drawing some yeah. great connections. Okay. So this this is not <laughs> this is not the subject of the show, but I think is interesting with the differences between yeah your Christmas. What were the hmm. like the differences of Christmas in your life? Well, Christmas out when you weren't a Catholic, and now when you are. Yeah, it was definitely um, along the secular kind of idea that Christmas starts closer and closer to Thanksgiving um, every year. It seems um, for for my family at least growing up, and then it it would it was dramatically over at like 10 a.m. on Christmas Day once the last present was opened and we all got, you know, we all got everything we wanted and we all went off to our separate corners of the house to take our little food comas and then it was just over. Christmas is done. And you take your stuff down and yep. December 26th, you just December wake 26th. up like a regular old day? Yeah, as soon as the Christmas tree comes down oh. like a week later, it's just... Yeah, and I, I get why people do that. And I think especially like kind of the culture 
yeah. moves us towards that. There's this big build up to Christmas, and then it's like over. But I just love. I mean, it's it's one of 1,216 things I love about being a Catholic. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is number 862 <laughs> on my list, wow, and that is that we celebrate all those. the Christmas season. And the birth of Christ is pretty low on there. Wow. No, 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 <laughs> no. The birth of Christ is like as in, is in uh, as, as number six. <laughs> Um, but the fact that we have this Christmas season, you know, that keeps going is number is number eight hundred and sixty two. Is it is it the resurrection, the final four, and then like number six is the, the incarnation. final four? Yeah, the final four, like for mean? basketball. Uh, that's not a reason to be Catholic. Oh, I, I thought Death, No, that's a the final four the final four is a, is on a separate list of things I like about being alive. Oh. Um, God. the final four is number uh, 368 on my list of 1,614 things I like about being alive. Where's a back scratcher on that? Back scratcher is number nine. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> back wow. scratcher. Wow. If you, yeah, back scratcher. Wow. Yeah. That's... Uh, you don't need to get me one of those for Christmas, people. Because you have. Because I have one in my room, I have one in my reading chair. I have one in my desk, um, and you actually, one in I, the car. I no, I don't have one in my car yet. That is that is so it's probably needs- coming soon. I have. I'm still discerning whether or not Ugh, I need a back scratcher in my car. You sound like a seminary. On the long, on the long yeah. car rides, mm-hmm. long car rides. I'm driving to Houston, <laughs> or I'm driving. You know, I like to. Ooh, yeah. Anyway, it's nice. Okay. Okay. Epiphany. What we wanted to Wh- talk about? Yes. Right. So. We have eleven a mutual, minutes into this, and we're <laughs> we have uh, twelve minutes. We have mutual friends, uh, uh, a, a young man who's a seminarian uh-huh. with us, who's been on the show. His name is Joey Griggs. Joe, Joe, Joe Bob Griggs. Joey Griggs, who's in seminary, who's in seminary with. Does he go by Joseph now? No. Oh, okay, so he's in seminary with Kyle up at, up at St. Louis. He's a seminarian for our diocese. Uh-huh. He was with us over the summer, uh, years ago. I'll keep it short. Years ago, I went to the Griggs home. Joey's one of eleven kids. Whoa. And I went and they celebrated Epiphany like I have never seen. So in my family, Christmas was a big deal. We kept we kept up the decorations mm-hmm, through mm-hmm. the Christmas season. But Epiphany was not a big deal for me. The Griggs do it up. Uh if my memory serves me, they open one present on Christmas okay. and all the other presents on Epiphany. Wow. Like a week later, more than a week later, sometimes two or three weeks later. Anyway, I just was always sort of intrigued by it. But really, Epiphany, when we talk about like gifts, bringing gifts. Yes. I mean, St. Nicholas brought, you know, presents, helped people. Um, But it's the wise men, the Magi, who brought gifts to Jesus. We three kings of the land <laughs> Yes. Bearing so gifts. we traveled so far. That uh, <laughs> anyway, that's where we. That's what we you know. We talk about gift giving. You know, yeah. gold, frankincense, myrrh. Um. So is that what people should be doing? I I know some families, and we talked about this the other day. I know I I kind of thought about it. You know, more there are. There are, it's a growing a group of people that are doing Is that right? Epiphany. You know other people besides uh, the Griggs family? The, the Griggs. Um, Cheryl does that with her kids. Uh, and I know some young families in Tulsa that do it now. Um, I heard, I think I heard Blake and Carly Bostic talking about it the other day of uh, Epiphany gifts with each other. So there's this like this resurrection of sort of old Catholic um, old Catholic, uh, what cultural the traditions. cultural traditions? Thanks, Kyle Dowd. Cultural traditions that that um, have been sort of lost in time, and, and and with the commercialization of Christmas, you know, as Kyle just mentioned, you know, it's like forty five days of of Christmas and terrible songs that people get to Christmas and are like, okay, I'm done hanging out with you. I'm going to my food coma station and pass out. And no, the the Christmas season continues on. That's like the, tw- the even the hymn, the Twelve Days of Christmas, the song, the English song, the Twelve Days of Christmas, which we did a podcast on back in the past. 
Remember? Probably like two years ago. Oh, it was it was bringing it, bringing it, bringing it back. It was way back Give there. Give that a Google search. Okay. By the way, it, Kyle was on the show a year ago, just so you know. Really? Last Christmas. Yeah. Wow. I think I, you were last gone. Christmas I gave you my heart. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so Epiphany is this a very important moment in the life of the Holy Family, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. It is a very important moment in the life of these three Persian uh, kings, these astrologers, astronomers, these scientists. Uh, astronomers. Uh, yeah. It's very different. Thank you. Thank you. These astronomers, these scientists who are on the search for the truth. And they're looking for the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. They're the one that as they come to Herod, they seek him out and they say, Shh, like, where? Where? Where like, is the newborn king? And and these three characters in the scriptures, as we, we call them, uh, because they have names, oh, let's see, Baltazar, um, they don't have them, their names in the scriptures. We kind of... Caspar. Caspar. And Melchior. 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 The, they're, those are sta- they're in the stained glass windows at Christ the King uh, Church in Tulsa. Yes. They're the only place I've ever seen them. Depict. And there's relics of the three wise men at the cathedral in Cologne, Germany. Cologne? Yeah. So they they come they come looking. I mean, they're using their intelligence, their mind to Faith say where and is this? Reason. W- like, they know the prophecies uh, that have been given to them because that that is like you know the Babylonian exile when God sent them off to Persia to be put into exile to reform these people to get sin out of their lives. God also taught the people the faith, the Jewish faith and the prophecies through these people in exile. And so like how how do these how do these Persians know about this? Well, because they were in Babylon. And so were the Jews. And so now these three wise these three wise guys, yeah, they they're like they're looking for the way, the truth and the life. And that's what our culture is seeking. They're seeking you know, the way, the truth, and the life. In all the wrong places. I would say some are in the right places, some are in the wrong places. All right, fine. Okay. I mean, it's, you know, 70, 30, 90, Looking 20. You know, it just depends. love in all the wrong places. Oh, whoa. Looking I know. So, wow. Let's mm-hmm. just take this moment and just pause for station identification. <laughs> we are on the BOB. Pete, 94.3. <laughs> AM 780. <laughs> Wow, that was that was a stunning moment when I, you saw. I, 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 my heart just leapt for joy. No, like we John are. The no, but that's what I mean. If you're, if so, the wise men, if the magi were looking for Jesus, and like, what, what did they do? They followed the star. Uh, mm-hmm. What if they were like, mm, no, I know. I mean, I know there's a star, and he's probably over there, but let's go, let's go in the opposite direction. You know, I mean, that's I think what our culture does a lot of times is. We're looking for, yeah. I mean, even to the point of like, um, you're talking about whether or not where we're searching for the truth. You know, like uh, looking for love in all the wrong places. It's like we're we often um, we're looking at good things uh, in the culture, like food or comfort or sex. power, sex. You know, which are all those are all good things. Like God created them to be good, uh, but then we what we're doing wrong is that we're assigning them. Uh, a higher place than they ought to have. Oh, you know, so like somebody for whom food we are not is just well like, ordered. Yeah, somebody for whom food is just like the thing. Like that's just all they think about. You know, uh, or power is probably a better. Uh, yeah, money. Yeah, money. Yeah, if you're willing to sacrifice anything in the world for money or for another person, even like uh, your girlfriend or your wife or whatnot, like. Um, that's a disordered love. Ultimately, if you if you're singing a love song to money, you're know, like, "You are my everything." It's like, "All right, hold on, come on." Money, now. money, money, money. Like I was in the I was in the Walgreens the other day, hearing a song, like literally saying about a woman, like everything comes back to you. And I'm like, "That's something we say me. about." That's something we say about uh, Jesus. I thought. Yeah. Now it's about. Sherry or something. <laughs> I've always liked that is. Christopher West uses this when he talks about the theology of the body. Like if you make, if you, if you're kind of putting all of your hopes and dreams on another person, mm-hmm. he says, you're going to crush them. Yeah. They can't, yeah. they can't sustain it. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have these. Yeah. So the Magi come along and teach us. Yeah. About the search for meaning, the search for truth. 
Um, and it takes a little while. It's not something that's always sort of immediately mm-hmm. apparent. I love in the when in kind of in the Magi. I think there's. I mean, there's so many lessons. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going yet with my um, epiphany homily. Um, but I kind of like. I really like the idea of like the the stepping out into the unknown. Mm. You know, how, did they know when they left Egypt, wherever they came from? You know, did they know they they had a destination? But like, how how were they going to get there? Sure. That stepping out into into the unknown is just is it's scary. It's interesting. It's exciting. It's yeah. adventurous. Yeah. Well, in the words of George Michael, you gotta have faith, the faith, the faith. Hey! I'm just gonna save us all from that. Oh <laughs> gosh, oh, you gotta have goodness. faith. That's right. But you also like that's a good illustration of how like the light of natural reason and natural truth. Like they saw. I mean, they they didn't know the God of Israel, let's say, but they knew uh, how stars worked. I guess. I'm not yeah, an astronomer, yeah. but like they they knew all of that stuff, um, and they knew that um, based on their knowledge of like like cosmology and whatnot, they're like, okay, if what happens in heaven indicates something about like what's going to happen on Earth. So they're proceeding from like what they knew. So in the same way, we see like good, true things about our lives, um, and that like. Because we're made in the image of God, that means we're seeing true things about God as well, like being Ooh, manifested in someone creation. Someone paid attention in philosophy. <laughs> Kyle down. I got it. You're, paying, it, you're lay, paying for it. Laying so. it down. <laughs> um, yeah, so we, we see those things, um, and that leads us to truths about God. Wow. Yeah. It's, uh, there's so many be- uh, beautiful things about Epiphany. Um Okay, so back to Father Kerry. Back to uh, should, so should, should people oh. should people be like sort of skip over Christmas to to celebrate Epiphany? I um, should I, we be giving gifts? So let's like pretend I gave you a Christmas present, which I didn't. Mm. Uh, other than my 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 presents, <laughs> I have a present for you out my car, which I have to. It's have a to. it's a dead squirrel. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, it's a horse head. It's in your bed. <laughs> uh, should we be giving presents on Epiphany? I I would like I would I have a I'm going to go out on a limb here and say. Kyle Dowd should answer this. I would like to re- return the remainder. But you of my said time. you know you know families that are. Oh yeah, I do. Like going in that direction. Is that a good direction? Should people? Should we be doing that? Well, well, the, what is the, the history of of gifts and presents comes from the Christian understanding of both like. Uh, St. Nicholas of Myra, who rescued those girls yep. by paying gold. That's, that's why, December 6th. That's why pawn Should shops we give have presents like, on December 6th. Pawn shops have like three like pieces of gold in every pawn shop uh, because St. Nicholas of Myra is the patron saint of, of pawnbrokers. Come uh, on. Uh, that, is that true? I think that is. Uh, so, is that true? If it's not, if it's, not it should be. <laughs> but uh, okay, so December December twenty fifth is, is the arrival right uh, the arrival of the the three wise men who bring these gifts to God. Like, are we bringing gifts to God, or are we bringing uh, gifts to ourselves? Patron uh, saint of pawnbrokers, Nicholas. Hear me now and believe me later. Wow. <laughs> hey, tell them why. Why what? Why, 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 why would, so yeah, gifts on, on Epiphany. Well, it actually reminds me of, um, I think it's Paul. It's somewhere somewhere in the New Testament where it says, like, uh, we love him because he first loved us. Is that John? Is that Paul? Something like that? I think that's the Gospel of John somewhere. One, one, one of the letters. Yeah, one of those. Um, so that, that, like, speaks a little bit about the order between, like, Christmas and Epiphany. Because um, I think I've heard this a lot in sermons or homilies of, like, um, not – being so focused on what I'm going to get for Christmas, let's say, but what am I going to give Jesus this Christmas? Uh, which is, uh, you know, it's better than just consumer, like, give me, give me, give me uh, mentality. But I think actually the idea of giving gifts on Epiphany is good because we can only um, give out of love to Jesus, which is what we're doing when we give gifts to each other. We can only give gifts out of love when we've already received. And, like, the whole point of Christmas was not so much Jesus coming to earth and saying, like, here I am, give me things. Um, But it was really, (laughs) it was him saying, I'm What do you give the person who has it all? Yeah. What do you give? um, It's, it was God saying at Christmas, like, I'm going to give humanity myself. 
just the greatest gift of it's all. It's all, yeah. Yeah. So it's really, I mean, Christmas is more so about saying really spiritually, like, what am I going to receive from Jesus Ooh, this season? So Christmas is more about receiving than and giving? Then, and then in the That'll period preach. of, like, the season of Christmas, um, after the Christmas day, is, like, unpacking that gift and appreciating it so that then you can turn around at Epiphany, maybe, and give that gift back to the Lord oh. or give something else to the Lord. Kyle. That's really great. Um, it's almost like my homily on Christmas, which I based off the uh, Sam Walton book I was reading. Will uh, you stop? <laughs> <laughs> Don't steal my stuff. But it was based a lot on you my Christmas read. homily. Huh? You don't what? read. What? Literacy is my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I agree with you. God, I mean, that God first loved us. So how That's we re- a great Christmas homily. That Christmas... Ought to be more about receiving than giving. Mm-hmm. But then it's like write how, that down, Kyle. Yeah, um, is it you know people want to be generous on Christmas and give to the poor, but you know as we heard from those uh, hymns during Advent, O come, O come, Emmanuel, who ransoms captive Israel, who mourns in lonely exile. I mean, like, who, like Mother Teresa had that line, like, who is the most poor person on the planet? And it's the people who don't know Jesus, like the financially poor the food poor, but then those people who have no salvation, mm. like the sal- those who, who do not know the Lord Jesus, who are hungering for divine life. Mother Teresa of Calcutta said, that's the poorest people on the planet. So wow. how can we um, appreciate what, we, what we've received from, from God as we talked about last week, he's become he's become man t- to save us. And you come, it comes back to the old line of like you can't you can't give what you don't have. And so, in order to give Jesus to others, I have to have first received Him. Um, that's why in the parish, you know, we're talking we talking about kind of encounter, grow, go, encountering the Lord, then growing with Him, and then going out. Right? You can't give what you don't have. Well, if it, you go out and say, I, you know, hey, everyone, you need Jesus, and you don't have Jesus then if, yeah. it's going to fall short. If you don't have, we, we talked about like on December December 23rd, um, the 22nd and the 23rd, those, those prayers from Mass about God giving his very divine life to man and woman. Like it's, it's, it's not like, hey, you need Jesus. It's how can I share this divine life which has been given to me with you, with every person I come in contact with, even the people that I would consider maybe my enemies. Kyle Dowd, Aww. to you. I mean, not, not Kyle Dowd, my enemy, but Aww. Kyle Dowd, the mic is yours. Right. Okay. I don't know what you want me to say. Wow. That, yeah, that's great. I forgive you, maybe? There's so many ways. That was brilliant, Father. So yeah. many, yeah, so many ways to go with Epiphany. Uh, faith and reason. Uh, the, I, I think the way I'll go is kind of the setting out on an adventure of, uh, of unknown, you know, kind of that you don't know the way. Yeah, you got to have faith. And Jesus is the way, you know? Gotta have uh, faith, 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 faith. Anyway, it's just a beautiful, uh, it's a beautiful solemnity, epiphany. The readings are wonderful. We learn about the Magi, and yeah, it's just it's just wonderful all the way around. So I'm glad that we talked about it here I, today. I'm, I think I'm going to go the direction um, since we're we're still a couple weeks out, or a couple. When days we're recording out. this, yeah, 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 we're a week. We're still before Christmas. Yeah, is the hunt. For God, like God, God is looking for us. The Hound of Heaven by Francis hou- Thompson. Oh, oh, don't steal my stuff! <laughs> and then the man, man, it's a woman's- beautiful poem. Google what? that, everybody. Don't no. Hey, hey, Alexa. you can't read it's long. You can't read. I'm going to read that whole thing to him. Hey, Alexa, it's like old Hound English. Of <laughs> <laughs> but it's beautiful. Yeah, that God pursues us. Yeah, God has pursued us, and He's come down from heaven to earth. I'm and now, coming for you. Yeah, Look and now. Busy. Look busy. <laughs> All right. Hey, happy new year. Merry Christmas. It's the most. Uh, thanks for Kyle Dowd for, for joining us. We're You're welcome. We're glad you're with us. And uh, we will see you and uh, you will hear us next week. But pray for us. And uh, don't forget to receive the Lord rather than just give presents. God bless. Have a blessed Christmas. Peace. Peace.